The risk of famine is growing in Gaza. More than half a million people are facing catastrophic food insecurity because of Israel's war and siege. That's the stark warning from the World Food Program and other UN agencies. So is Israel using food deprivation as a war tactic? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Adrian Finnegan. Surviving in a war that has killed more than 25,000 people and injured 63,000 in Gaza is not just a matter of avoiding Israel's bombs, bullets and brutality. Survival for 2.3 million Palestinians under siege and under attack also means finding enough food to eat. A crisis of unprecedented scale is looming, according to the UN, with everyone in Gaza at risk of food insecurity in the next few weeks. Hamas has called for the area to be declared a famine zone, while Israel claims there is enough food. So what's really happening and what needs to be done to ease the crisis? We'll be discussing all of this and more with our guests in just a moment. But first, Malachabi Motsepi has this report on why many people in Gaza are hungry. A desperate cry for help for the most basic of human needs. When Palestinians aren't looking for shelter from Israeli drones and rockets, they are searching the essentials for survival, food and clean water. More than two million people in Gaza under Israeli attack and siege are facing what the United Nations is calling catastrophic hunger. I regret to say we are on the verge of a famine, a real famine. Rice is almost out of stock. It's the second most basic food item to flour. If we run out of rice, we will be consumed by famine. This is the harsh reality. Agencies trying to deliver aid across Gaza say Israel's unrelenting bombardment hinders them from doing so, and nearly three quarters of their requests to enter are rejected. Israel searches all deliveries it permits into the territory. This causes major delays, while some aid doesn't get through at all. There was two convoys around the 11th and the 13th of January that were carrying 200 tons of food for 15,000 people. 15,000 people, that's really a, a very, very small numbers. And this is why we're seeing people becoming more desperate, being impatient to wait for food distributions because it's very sporadic, they don't get it frequently, and they have no trust or confidence that these, um, that these convoys will come again. Israel says it is allowing aid in and there's enough food and accuses aid agencies of lying and creating false narratives. Allegations of deliberate efforts to starve Palestinians in Gaza over time is at the core of South Africa's genocide lawsuit that is being considered in the International Court of Justice in The Hague. More than 25,000 Palestinians have been killed in this war. Gaza has been under siege and Israeli attack for nearly two decades. The World Bank and World Health Organization said before the war, nutritional deficiencies and associated health problems were widespread in the Strip, with pregnant women and infants particularly affected. The war has worsened the situation, with food now far more scarce and expensive. The prices are unimaginable. One kilo of this bad quality wheat flour is 10, 12 shekels. That's up from three in the past for a much better quality. Half of this flour is unusable. Imagine that even before the war and when people had salaries, the situation was already untenable. People were suffering. Right now, it's many, many, many times worse. The war has brought misery for people in Gaza. Those who've survived Israel's attacks so far face a daily battle to find food for themselves and their families. Malachaba Motzebe, Al Jazeera, for Inside Story. Well, for those suffering from hunger in Gaza, legal definitions are not exactly what they'll be thinking about right now. But what actually defines a famine? Well, according to the Integrated Food Security Phase classification, food security, nutrition and mortality are all considered. The threshold is reached when at least 20% of households in an area are facing extreme food shortages with limited ability to change their circumstances. About one out of three children in the population are acutely malnourished 
And when there's at least two people dying per day for every 10,000 inhabitants due to starvation, malnutrition and disease. Article 8 of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court states that intentionally using the starvation of civilians as a method of warfare by impeding relief supplies is a war crime. So let's bring in our guests. From Somerville, Massachusetts in the U.S., we're joined by Alex Duval, who is the author of Mass Starvation, an authoritative history of modern famines. He's analyzed food deprivation as a crime and researched forced starvation as an instrument of genocide and war. From Oslo, we're joined by Mads Gilbert, a doctor of emergency medicine with long experience of working in Gaza's health sector, including during previous Israeli bombardments. And from Bethlehem in the occupied West Bank, we're joined by Reham Jafari, who's the communication and advocacy coordinator for Action Aid Palestine. A warm welcome to you all. Alex, let's start with you. What does the word famine actually mean in practical terms, and can it be applied to what we're seeing right now in Gaza? Well, you just gave the, the correct definition um, as it, developed by international humanitarian agencies over uh, the last 20 years. And under that definition, um, Gaza is on the brink of famine. In fact, it may already be descending in, in, in into famine conditions. And, and certainly, it applies here. Um, all modern famines are essentially acts of political or military decision, either deliberate or reckless. Reckless meaning that the those in charge know that they are producing uh, mass hunger and starvation and death through hunger and, and, and disease and continue on regardless, even if it is not their stated policy to cause death through starvation. All modern famines are primarily triggered by this factor, not by natural calamity. Alex, would a declaration of famine in Gaza actually change anything on the ground? A declaration of famine doesn't have legal effect. It is really just a, an alarm signal to the international community that something needs urgently to be done. And of course, even one step short of famine, such as we are now, the conditions are absolutely unacceptable. People are already dying en masse from, um, from hunger and disease. The threshold is, is quite an arbitrary one. Mads, let's talk about malnutrition. Um, what happens to an adult and a child when they don't get sufficient food, or, or at least food with the right nutrients? Well, it weakens the body's resistance, the power of resisting bacteria and virus, and uh, life hardship at large. We know from studies that um, the kind of chronic malnutrition that we see in Gaza, and I, I want to make a point that this uh, situation we have now is an accentuation uh, of a situation we've had during the 16 years of siege. There are a number of studies showing a chronic low-grade protein malnutrition as a result of the siege of Gaza, affecting children. But what you see uh, in the body is that you will have a weaker immune system, and then you will be more uh, uh, vulnerable to infections, like infections with cholera, smallpox, and acute respiratory infections, which we see actually in southern Gaza, in the smallest of the children, we have seen a surge in RSV virus infection. You will have um, chronic asthma and you will have anemia. One important point is that the pregnant woman who experience uh, starvation or famine will have a child that is uh, in the uterus is malnutrition with a protein and that will have lifelong consequences for cardiovascular disease, for diabetes, and for um, um, auditive problems. And in addition to this, of course, you have the problems with um, cognition and with the mental development in children who are exposed to chronic uh, malnutrition. I'll, so I'll, all I'll, of these are very se yeah. serious medical consequences. I, I, I wanted to ask you, Mads, after a period of, of severe hunger, uh, when a person does begin to get the right kind of food and nutrition again, can the effects that you've just described be be reversed? I mean, in, in children, as you say, and particularly with with uh, with unborn children, that the effects can be lifelong. Uh, what about adults? 
Well, the studies that uh, we know so far from other countries also during wartime and, and times of uh, the few natural disasters that have caused famine, uh, we, it seems that the, um, the problems you have while uh, being in pregnancy are not reversible. They are lifelong to the extent that the children will have more cardiovascular problems than people, than children who were not uh, exposed to famine during their pregnancy. For the adults, it is, of course, a matter of how complex your health problem has been. And don't forget that famine or, or lack of food in Gaza is only, only one aspect of this man-made disaster. In addition, you have the complexity of the trauma of the attacks and you have the injuries. And we hear from our colleagues in Gaza that 100% of the war wounds are infected because of lack of water and probably also because of the mal malnutrition situation. So this is a very, very complex and very dangerous situation for the people uh, in Gaza. And it's all man-made, can be reversed in a second. Riham, give us an idea of, of, of what daily life is like uh, for families trying to survive in Gaza right now. We know that Gaza's fresh water and sanitation services are not functioning, but, but how, how do people go about finding food to feed their kids? So the food situation is catastrophic. It is more than catastrophic. Uh, famine is spreading in Gaza, and it is intensified in the northern uh, part of Gaza. Uh, this situation is a result of political choices and political decision uh, caused uh, by a uh, limited aid delivered to Gaza. So the families in Gaza do not have sufficient food to feed themselves. Uh, Gaza as a coastal city depends on uh, fishing and on agricultural product for their usual uh, food system. But these uh, components of food system are distracted by the war. So they do not have access to fish and do not have access to agricultural products due to the destruction of farming. 22% of agriculture uh, was destroyed and is more than 70 of ship fishing boats Boats were destroyed, and the, so and the people depend on the humanitarian aid, and the humanitarian aid is delivered with small quantities, with limited amount that doesn't cover the uh, imminent needs of the people. So, uh, and uh, some people in the north it depend on a dried rice and the dried uh, pasta for their say, daily food because, and also we have to take into consideration that there is no fuel allowed to Gaza for making food or for making uh, a bread. So, uh, and also the structure of food, of making food as bakeries were targeted. These conditions left people under severe shortage of uh, famine and starvation. So they do not have fuel to make their okay. food. They do not have okay. enough uh, uh, people. And also but, one of the testimonies that we received right. that people in North Gaza use the feed of animals for grinding the flour as an alternative R for wheat. OK. R R Reham, Israel insists that there is enough food and water for people in Gaza. I'll come back to you in just a moment, uh, uh, Mads. Uh, Israel's blaming the UN and Hamas for the slow distribution of aid. It, I mean, is, is there any merit at all in that argument? Does the UN have enough staff? Has it deployed enough trucks? The uh, delivery of the humanitarian aid and the humanitarian aid truck is being impeded it's due to the continuous pumping, it's due to the lack of guarantee for the safety of aid workers, and also the communication blackout in Gaza impedes the coordination process between the aid organization and the destruction of the roads also impedes the, uh, the, uh, the, the walk and the delivery and uh, the work of uh, aid trucks. All of these conditions they make the humanitarian aid, make the delivery of food items are impossible uh, to, uh, to many parts in Gaza. 
So, uh, and in addition to the limited amount that entered through Rafah and through Karim Abu Salim checkpoints and the crossing borders, so um, it is around from 100 to 200 aid trucks that are allowed every day. Gaza needs, according to the estimation of the governmental media office, needs nowadays more than 1,000 trucks to full full to cover the needs of its residents. Okay. So before 7th of October, Gaza used to receive around 580 trucks. What, what is received now is nothing, cannot okay. cover the uh, needs of uh, the people. The, Alex, I'll come back to you in a moment, but Matt, you wanted, you wanted to make a point there. Yeah, uh, I, I think these allegations that, you know, it's all up to UN and, and Hamas and the Palestinians, and, and that there is enough food from the Israeli occupation army. It's, it's another blatant lie. I mean, we, we, we do have the statistics from the very punctual and accurate statistics from Orsha coming every second day. And um, as my colleague in, in Ramallah said, you know, before this attack, there were an average of 500 trucks per day. Of them, 150 at least were trucks with food to sustain life in Gaza even with agriculture and fishing uh, and the food basket that they could fill themselves. Now, after, uh, it has been an average down to 100 trucks per day and only 30 to 40 trucks with food. This is according to the last IPC special brief on famine in Gaza. So there is absolutely no doubt that Israel has been uh, blocking the entry of not only medical relief, but also food relief. And it is a deliberate a deliberate planned governmental politics to eradicate the people of Gaza through disease, through bombing, and through non-availability of medical supplies and medical services, and the famine and the lack of water. This is one of the most gruesome uh, uh, concerted attacks on public health that I have ever seen. And they say so also in the IPC report. This is the worst we've seen in modern history. So this is a man-made situation aimed at diminishing health and survival among civilian Palestinians. Let's call out the name. This is a war crime. This is a weapon of mass destruction used deliberately by Israel. Alex, what does international law say about sieges and military campaigns that cause starvation and famine? And, and how does the famine threshold have to be crossed for, for Israel uh, to have violated international law. If it is violating international law with the siege and its war on Gaza, can it be held accountable? Those are all very good points. Let me just preface that by um, endorsing something that, that Matt just said, which is that I've been studying this topic for, for almost 40 years. And during that 40 years, I have not seen or studied a situation in which a population was reduced um, with, uh, with this speed, this rigor, this comprehensiveness to a state of starvation. It is, it is unprecedented since World War II and, and as such, uh, profoundly disturbing. Now, in terms of international law, there are, there are a number of, of aspects here. Uh, South Africa brought the case to the International Court of Justice um, alleging genocide and the prohibition, the most relevant prohibition under the Genocide Convention is and that 2C in, in the Genocide Convention, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. And the key there is the intent, the intent to destroy in whole or in part. And it will take many years for the, the ICJ to come to a decision on that. But in the meantime, they can issue uh, provisional orders, instructions for what Israel might do. And without having to, 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 to confirm that there is genocidal um, intent. And here, the war crime of starvation is the relevant one. And let me read that because um, the, the, there's a clause in it that you um, that you actually omitted in, in, in your introduction, which is, and so let me read it in full, intentionally using starvations as a method of warfare by depriving them of objects indispensable to their survival, including willfully impeding relief supplies. 
So the key here is destroying objects indispensable to survival, which is not just food. That is, um, the legal definition of starvation also includes water, sanitation, uh, health care, shelter, uh, maternal care for children, and all of those are being destroyed. And the important thing here is not that the intention is to cause death by starvation. The intention is to deprive. And um, that clearly is happening deliberately. There is no question that the um, that Israel is is war strategy includes this massive destruction of all this essential infrastructure. Now, the Israeli argument is that Hamas is using um, civilian shields. It has its war, its own war infrastructure hidden in 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 civilian infrastructure that it is obstructing and stealing aid and and so on. And some of this may be true. But a violation by one party to a conflict in no way justifies a violation by okay. the yeah. other party. So uh, Israel is responsible no matter what. And if, Alex, Israel tomorrow were suddenly to allow enough aid in to feed the people of Gaza, uh, would that allow it to, to, to wriggle out of the, of the accusations that, that it has committed the crime of starvation? Um, no, it would not, because the crime has 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 already been uh, perpetrated at scale. And and I, let me add um, two more things. If even if it allows in aid, but it continues to destroy objects indispensable to survive, that would be uh, uh, prohibited. And also, the, the 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 crisis will, I'm afraid, not stop overnight. A humanitarian crisis on this scale is like a huge heavy freight train and, and if the driver puts on the brakes immediately as as hard as as as, as can be put on that momentum of that train will continue for some time so the the it will be a weeks months for 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 the the humanitarian crisis the crisis of of hunger of infectious disease of lack of sanitation to be overcome and as Matt was saying earlier, there will also be the, the lifelong impacts of starvation on, 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 on children. This is not um, a crisis that can be solved overnight, and the, 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 the effects are going to last um, for many, many years. Uh, Riyama, we, we were talking about objects indispensable to survival. Tell us something of uh, the situation that women in particular face right now in Gaza. Women in particular, they face um, first psychological stress for being unable to fulfill the food needs of their children. And also uh, they face uh, over increased uh, and uh, loads on their shoulders uh, because they need to find alternative uh, for, uh, for fuel. To, uh, for making bread and uh, and also they have to wait uh, for long hours in queues for getting a floor for making breads for their families and uh, their children and also uh, the pregnant woman uh, cannot uh, have healthy children and uh, they might give uh, uh, sick children uh, due to this uh, uh, shortage of food and also uh, they also they have to make sometimes uh, impossible choices. Uh, sometimes they will not eat and they will give the, the priority and the food they have to their children. So th this uh, crisis has long impacts on women, uh, increases their stress, increases their loads and responsibilities, and also um, maybe endanger their health. Uh, reproductive health and their general health. And uh, so uh, for this reason and uh, the, the uh, ceasefire and the stopping of the war should be taken immediately, should be made immediately. There is an urgent call to reach ceasefire to, to, to overcome this famine, to mitigate its effects because its effects and its impacts will stay for a long time. Okay. Matt, um what can we expect to see in the coming weeks? You touched on this several times uh, before, but, but if Israel doesn't allow enough aid into Gaza, what's going to happen? Well, more people will die. Avoidable death. Avoidable death. 
Uh, don't forget that there are tens of thousands of war injured in, a, in addition to the you know, people with ordinary diseases who are also affected by the famine. Um, and don't forget that when you are uh, in a negative protein balance coming from starvation, lack of food, your wounds will heal much more slowly. Your bones will grow together much more slowly, and you are much more uh, uh, likely to have infections in your wounds. All of this we see in Gaza now. So they are actually, in addition to, to making life miserable for the population by not having enough food, they are also causing massive medical problems in a population with tens of thousands of war wounded with complicated wounds, with complicated fractures. Many of them go into septicemia and die from avoidable infections. And I'd like to add one more point to this effect of the lack of dietary energy, meaning, you know, if you don't have enough food, you lack also the energy to live a normal and active life. And if, it's, if it, there is anything needed for people in Gaza now, it is to have energy to survive the cold, the, the, the wet weather, the lack of housing. 60% of the housing for people in Gaza is destroyed by bombing. To have medical problems, to have a split family, all of this demands a lot of inner energy just to survive the everyday. And with the starvation, okay. the energy is stolen. So to make life unlivable, miserable, okay. and dangerous, all of these factors are sort of collectively done by Israel uh, with the starvation, the lack of water, the lack of security, the yeah. lack of medical supplies. And I agree, the only, the only recipe now, it is to stop the bombing immediately and open okay. the gates to Gaza. Alex, we've got about a minute left, um, and I'm going to ask you a complicated question. I'm sorry, but be as brief as you can, please. Is Israel deliberately trying to delay or derail a declaration of famine in Gaza? I don't think that Israel has this famine declaration on its agenda. I think Israel, to, from what we see, is pursuing its war with a, a, a determination to inflict as much damage as it can in the short term before international pressures in general uh, begin to press it towards um, restraint or, or, or backing down. I'm afraid we are headed full scale into a totally unnecessary calamity that will go down in the annals of history as, as one of the great crimes of this century. And there we must leave it. Many thanks indeed. Alex Deval, Mads Gilbert and uh, Riham Jafari. Thank you for watching. You can see the programme again at any time by going to the website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, join us at our Facebook page. You'll find that at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And of course, you can join the conversation on X. Our handle there at AJ Inside Story from me, Adrian Finnegan, and the team here in Doha. We'll see you again. Bye for now.